Howdy. Um, I don't know if about you, but I have a 2010 Camaro, and periodically I've gotten some evaporator-related uh, um, error codes. The most recent was the P0449 associated with the um, evaporator canister solenoid in the rear of the car. Uh, previously, I've had the code that goes along with the evaporator purge valve. So this video is going to show you how to do both of those valves. We're going to start with the uh, evaporator purge valve in the engine compartment. Then we'll uh, transition to the evaporator canister solenoid in the rear of the car. Okay, so I'm not going to uh, replace this particular part today. I already did it. But you come in, you remove the oil cap, pull your heat shield up and bring it forward and put your oil cap back to keep the dirt out. <clears throat> then there are two plastic uh, rivets here that hold this belt liner. Um, this one's kind of broken back. Uh, here you can see the actual um, purge valve. You can see here there's kind of a rotate and release. You got to push it toward the, the device, rotate it, and then release it. This one's got a um, like a pressure clamp, I'm not sure, but you just got to fill with it. And then here's the electrical connection. Okay, so here's the part um, you can see it in the car here. This is a twist cable where you push. You got to push it in, and then rotate it to pull it off. Um, this you have to kind of flip the little uh, electrical tab here. You pull the cord out, and then this last one has. Uh, you can see the gray here. The, there's like a pressure clamp that you got to squeeze and pull it off. In here is a rubber um, holder. If you look at this metal flange, this is where it's mounted. You can see the square rubber piece that mounts onto this. That's what goes right in here. And then this is not the, the part, but it basically that metal flange that you see right here is sitting like that. So you pull it off. If you uh, Once you get the hoses disconnected, you slide it off. You take the rubber piece out, put it in your new part, slide it back in and then reconnect the hoses and reconnect the electrical. Alright, as we get ready to start the um, evaporator canister solenoid replacement, um, just a couple observations. If you have um, short stubby fingers, if you got real thick wrists and big bulky forearms, uh, short arms, you might not want to try this uh, on your own. Um, the, the opening that you'll be working in, the two openings that you're working in are extremely uh, tight. There's not a lot of room. Uh, you have to do everything with one hand. Well, actually with a couple fingers on one hand because it's so tight. Uh, so just think about that before you start this um, and I'll catch you at the end. Okay, so safety first. Uh, you're definitely going to need goggles for this. Or glasses, you know, something to protect your eyes. Because the way you get at this part is back through the wheel well here, and then up from underneath. Um, and it's extremely tight. And when you're underneath looking up, there's a lot of dirt and grime. So first thing I'm going to do is I've already loosened with the lug nut. I've broken these loose. I haven't taken them off, obviously. Uh, I just want them to loosen up because I'm going to jack the car up put it on jack stands, lower back on the jack stands, and then I'm going to rock the car and check and see if it's stable. And that way if it were to fall off, the wheel is still on there. Um, and it won't fall down to the ground. Once I'm sure the car is stable, then I'm going to take the lug nuts off and remove the tire so that I can access uh, back into the wheel well. A couple of other safety tips. Make sure you chalk the front wheels. I have the emergency brake on and I personally don't trust jack stands even though so I always put my ramp under there maybe it's good helpful maybe not bottom line is here we are coming in from the passenger side and I'm going to bring the camera in it's going to be extremely difficult to uh, see the opening Sorry about the jiggly camera here. The opening is right here. There's also more space 
right up here. You may have to hold this wire that comes down to the brakes out. I think this is the ABS feedback. I'm not sure. Uh, here's the fuel line hose going up to the filler port here. But basically, I don't know if we can get in there and see that or not. Okay, my finger. Wow. Okay, my finger is touching. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, my finger is touching the canister right here. So you'll be able to see the round bottom portion of it. This is the space you got to work with. There's a little more space down toward the front of the car to get your hand in and then work your wrist up. But it's extremely tight. Okay, now I'm viewing this from behind the passenger's rear wheel. Here's the spring assembly. And if you look up through above the this metal brace here, I'm not sure what it's called. Um, you might be able to see the corrugated hose. So it actually, this is where I was able to find the metal bracket that it's mounted to by looking from the from underneath the car up at about a 45 degree angle. Now the last way that you can find this, and you have to spend a lot of time underneath the car here. Don't know if you can see the blue uh, marks up there. But you can see this corrugated wire, the uh, cable housing that goes up into under, you know, underneath the trunk here. So I'm going to try and lower this down and give you a little orientation. But you can see as I lower down here, you got the uh, axle coming from the differential out to the passenger side, and uh, there's. If you keep coming back, I'm going to try and come all the way down as far as it'll go. Here's the exhaust, and I don't, I don't know what this is part of the frame. Okay, now we're looking in uh, from the wheel well. Obviously, the wheel has been removed. Here's the spring, and you can see there's kind of an opening right here. There's a metal piece right here. This is the, basically the, it's not the trunk, but it's the uh, wheel assembly. And right here, you can barely see it, is the bottom of the purge canister. So if we were to look at this part, what we're seeing is this bottom portion right here, right, right in that position there. Now to get at it, you can reach in there, and you can touch it by reaching in. But you really have to stick your hand in at a sort of a 45 degree angle going forward in this open area and then, for lack of a better term, slide your wrist up into the notch to be able to work with the device that's up in here. Now, as you're looking at it, you see that it's mounted like this. Unfortunately, GM did not mount the uh, clip. This is not the actual clip, but it's simulated. It didn't mount it up here where you could get at it and you know move your thumbnail over here. And release it. It actually mounted it to this back bracket. So when it's up here, there is no way to get your hand around the left side. At least, no, at least not my hands. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to actually reach up, put your hand in, come in from the, the front. Remember, the front of the car is that direction. Grab hold of this and gently bend it to about a 45 degree angle. Okay. So it's still mounted here back to wherever it's coming from. This is the one thing, you know, obviously you could break it off potentially, I guess. Uh, there's a little bit of risk there, but um, there's no other way to, to do this without dropping the back. Now when it's up here, you still can only see this bottom portion, uh, so you may have to come and look back from this uh, uh, aft angle that we showed earlier, uh, or be looking up a little bit more from an, an upward angle. You're going to have to take this guy right here. The longest flat head screwdriver or uh, something with a little hook on the end that you can find. This one's about uh, 12 to 14 inches. 
So now what I'm going to do is reach back in with this and get between the, the metal uh, flange here and this little stop. There's a little um, backstop right here. And I'm going to exaggerate it and you're basically going to twist it and release and then pull it forward. So this there's a little clamp here that this thing has a little clamp on it so once you twist it out it will slide off the rail and be hanging you know loose inside of the cavity that's right here. So that's step two is to get this thing off the rail the reason you have to get it off the rail is because now the hose that's connected right here has a pressure clamp. You cannot get at it until you now, <clears throat> excuse me, until you sort of pull it free of its mount, then twist it back, and then jam it as far into the center of the car as you can. Now this is where the second person comes into play. Someone's going to have to hold this. Um, so that you can come, if, if this is the center of the car, so we're going to have to push it back into that cavity so that you can come up from underneath and clamp, grab the clamp that's holding this hose on, squeeze it, loosen it up, and then work this hose off the back. It's a little bit tedious. Uh, it wasn't exceptionally hard, but you got to have uh, either those long pliers or maybe a small set of vice grips or something like that. Um, I used a small vice grip and laying underneath I pushed it up through there and I grabbed hold and clamped it, slid it over and then grabbed the hose and worked the hose off. Okay, so now we have removed the electrical connector we have bent it and released the uh, connection. We pushed it in and from underneath the car we came up and clamped it and removed the hose. Really the last thing that you have to do now is reach up while you're underneath there and grab hold of this, this corrugated hose and pull it straight down. Now if you look at these, this, this is a very, very flimsy um, wedge style docking. It's just a simple hole in the metal. There's a, um, you know, it pushes up, it pulls down, you can do it with one finger. Um, you might even be able to do it from this, from the side of the car. You might be able to reach back there. But I, while I was underneath, I just pulled it out. Now you get into a little bit of uh, debate. Um, some people, some of the videos say you can't get it out the side and they take it out the bottom. Um, I was able to get it out the side and get the new one back in the side, but I will warn you, it is very tight. The way you have to do that, uh, or the way I did it, was I reached up in here with a like a cutter and I, I cut this out and pulled it out of the way just to get rid of it. Okay, then I rotated it. Remember, it was, at this point it was off. I basically brought it down and into a position like this and brought it out of this wider area right here and worked it out and then pulled it out. Now when I go back in, remember there's a hose on here. That hose can be tucked around and pulled down in front of the gas tube and you can roll it back in and push it up and turn it back into position. But it is tight as, I mean, it's really hard to get in. Uh, going back in, I was beginning to wonder if I had made a mistake. Um, most of the guys, the other videos I've seen, they take it out, um, basically twist it and bring it out through the bottom of the car. Uh, I don't know how you get it back in and get it aligned, but um, that's, you know, whichever way you take it out, um, there are two ways to get it back in. Now, once it's back in, um, the new part here has a hose. The, or, the order that I did was from underneath, I reached up, and if you look here, there's a little lip on this guy. I stuck my hand up in there, and I put my finger up, found the hole, guided, guided it into the hole so it was sticking in there, and then from underneath, I reached up with the edge and pushed until it snapped in. 
So at this point, the, the reconnection was set up like this. This one was now docked. I then worked the hose on the back. I slid it back on, squeezed the clamp, and moved the clamp forward so that it was on the uh, over the uh, nipple here. Uh, then I came in. I came out from under the car. I came in through here. I grabbed this. This is hooked up. I slid it back on to the 45 degree thing until it clicked and then I bent it back just in case there was some reason they had it that direction and then the last thing was to come in put my hand in and grab the cable and uh, insert the electrical cable from behind now when you're buying the part um, some of the videos show it uh, make sure you get mine's a 2010 so mine has a oval shaped um, connection um, you really won't know until you're in the car which one you have but some of them have a more rectangular one uh, and you might need an adapter so just be prepared that uh, ask the dealer or ask them to make sure that you have the right one um, 2010 V6 Camaro it's the oval adapter so with that said uh, you can do it uh, oh but you know you have to have a second person because when you're underneath um, getting the clamp off of this guy and sliding the hose off and when you're underneath there pulling down on this thing to disconnect it somebody has to be on the side of the car pushing this as far into the car as you can because the gap where the screwdriver is coming up, the gap where the wrench is coming up is further in the car than where the where the device normally sets and you don't have long enough arms to do both so you need a patient person who's willing to sit there and hold that thing while you figure out how to get hold of the various clamps and uh, hoses and things like that on the back side. Um, hope this helped. Uh, good luck in step one electrical step two bend it step three pull the you know pry it off of its mount step four push it all the way to the back step five pull clamp pull the clamp off pull that hose out step six is remove and then reverse that process good luck Okay, so we've covered uh, how to replace the evaporator purge valve in the front uh, in the engine compartment and how to replace the evaporator canister solenoid which is drives the P0449 code. Um, as you do this, I hope you uh, focus on safety, make sure you wear eye protection and um, you know, take care to uh, make sure the car is safe on those jack stands before you get underneath it. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions to help other people, please add them below. And uh, best wishes and good luck on the, the project.